Hi everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be looking at one of our new October release products, which is the Cross Stitch Tag Die. And we're going to kind of take a look at how this die works and the different things that you can do with it. So the die comes with these pieces here, so there's four pieces in total. When you receive your die, this little cross stitch hole detail that's in the center is actually attached to the tag. So it's completely optional. You can either leave it intact and just have a tag that always die cuts with the holes in it, or you can remove it like I've done here so that you can also use the tag on its own without the whole detail. So it's completely up to you. It's completely customizable and you can use it however you'd like. I went ahead and cut the tag out of two pieces of cardstock. So I have a white piece and a craft piece. And the craft piece looks really nice when you do any kind of stitching like with white or like a solid color. It's just a really pretty effect. Now for the white, we're going to do some colored stitching. So I have some examples here, of some tags I've already created. So this is a little tag that I have stitched with an owl image wearing a scarf. And then I've just kind of dressed it up with some cardstock and some pattern paper. For this one here, I've done my stitching with a Santa image, and then this one here is a snowman. And for all of these images, I just kind of created a pattern onto a scratch piece of paper that I could work and translate onto the tag image. Now this one here is a different kind of look, and it's actually not even stitching, it's pencil crayons. So what I've done is I've taken another pattern, and rather than stitch the image onto the tag, I've just used the pencil crayons to recreate the image for those of you who want to have the look of cross stitching but don't necessarily want to sew. So I just kind of want to go through the basics of how you do the cross stitching on these tags. I have done this for years and years and years, and it's just a really fun hobby, and it's really fun to kind of translate it into paper. So to start off, I have my tag, which is die cut, and I also have a sewing needle. So this is, I believe, a darning needle or an embroidery needle, and it has a kind of a smooth tip on it. It doesn't have a really sharp point, and you don't need one for this type of um, embroidery. Now for my colors, I like to use DMC thread, and I keep them stored in these containers. I have a bunch of this thread. I've had it for years, and I just have pretty much my favorite colors kind of sorted into one of the containers, just so that I can quickly and easily grab it and just kind of take it on the go with me. So I keep all of the thread wrapped around these little plastic bobbins, and then I just kind of separate the thread when I want to do my sewing. So this is DMC six strand thread, and I like to use three strands of this at a time. You can get single DMC thread, which is a lot thicker. It's actually about as thick as all six of these strands combined, but I like the six strands so that I can kind of decide how thick I want my thread when I'm sewing different projects. So I'm just removing some of the red thread here so that we can use it in the video and I just like to tuck the thread back into the bottom area here and this just kind of helps keep everything straight and not tangled. And then we are going to get ready to start sewing our image. Now before we get to that I do want to show you something that we've created that is going to make working with these tags a lot of fun. So this is the cross stitch tag create your own patterns download and you can get this on our website and what this is going to do is give you four different rectangle sections on this piece of paper which is sized perfectly to go with the tag and this is going to allow you to create your own patterns with markers or whatever you can kind of color in the different patterns and then translate that onto the tag. So it's just a lot of fun and it's a really easy way to be able to design your own patterns. Now if you prefer to have patterns already created for you that are already going to fit in the tag, we've also got some of these. So we have the snowflake patterns first, and this one here features four different snowflake designs that are already sized to fit within the confines of the tag. So you can just literally download the pattern, get your floss out, and then just completely follow this pattern. We also have Christmas trees and candy cane patterns. So this one here has three different tree designs. We kind of have a super simple one, a kind of a little bit more full, and then that last one there has all of the Christmas lights. And then we also have a candy cane image. And then to finish off the patterns, we have Christmas characters and critter patterns. And this one includes Rudolph, Santa, a snowman, and the owl. So these are pretty much the three tags that I created. The Santa's a little bit different, but pretty close. And then the Rudolph there. And you can keep him completely brown when you stitch him, or you can add some red detail to the center of his um, nose to make him Rudolph. It's just a great way to kind of be able to utilize these tags and already have patterns for you. So you can definitely check those out on our blog. We will have those available for printing in our printable re resources section on the sidebar. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to start to sew one of these tags. And we're not going to do an entire tag in the video. It will take way too long. This is a little bit of a process. So if you like to kind of just sit and relax and do some stitching, then you will love kind of working with this die. Um, but it does definitely take a little bit of time to stitch out the various patterns. 
So what I'm doing first is separating my floss. Like I mentioned before, these are six strands of floss and I want to use three. So I separated it in half, so now I have two pieces of thread that I'm going to be able to use for my stitching. So I went ahead and threaded my thread into the needle, and now I'm just figuring out where I need to start on my pattern. So you can see there I'm going to count three rows down, and I'm going to go six squares in, and that's where I want to start this first row of the Santa hat. So I just usually like to use my needle just to kind of move it along and figure out where I am just because there is a lot of holes there so sometimes it can be a little tricky to figure out where you are. And then I like to start my initial stitch. So I just pull the thread completely through and leave a little bit of a tail which I got off camera, sorry about that. And then I just use my finger to hold that tail in place until I have a couple of these X's stitched into the pattern. Once you have a few of them stitched that is going to stay in place and you're not going to really need to worry about it anymore. So one thing that I do recommend when you are doing any type of cross stitching is to always make sure that your X's are going in the same direction. So you always want to make sure that the bottom of the X is going in one direction and the top of the X is going in the other direction. And once you've decided what that is with your first stitch, you just want to stay consistent with that as you do your sewing. It's not the end of the world if you change it up, but you definitely will notice in the finished design, especially if you fill the entire tag with stitches, you might notice that change in pattern if you do change what is the top and what is the bottom of your X. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head as you're doing the stitching and then just kind of start going and figure out exactly how far over you want to go. I usually just count how many stitches are in that first row and then I just head on my way and keep going until I have all of those stitches added. And as you go, you get really fast at this. I am definitely not this fast. I just wanted to speed it up so that I could kind of leave it in there to kind of show you as I go here what I'm doing with the stitching. So you're literally just adding X patterns all the way across until you get to the end and then you're just gonna go to the next row and start the exact same process. And definitely have fun with the different patterns, especially if you create your own or even if you are using the downloadable ones that we have here, you can definitely change them up and make them your own. You don't have to use white cardstock for the tag, so you can change that to whatever you want. Like I mentioned before, the craft tags look really pretty with white stitching or red stitching. Um, so definitely mix that up if you want to change it a little bit. And then you can kind of mix up your thread. You can change and do different colors. It's just completely up to you how you want to do this. And with DMC threads, you have a lot of options. So if you're not familiar with it, um, there is metallic threads and there's multicolored threads. So there's just a bunch of different options that you have available if you want to get really fun with the different designs. And like I mentioned, doing these tags does take a little bit of time. So I like to just take my patterns and my tags and I just pre-cut a bunch of tags and then I take my thread and my needle and all the stuff that I'm going to need and I just kind of take it with me. So I like to camp, so I love to take these with me to camp. You can do the sewing patterns while you're watching TV or a movie. So any type of activity that you're kind of just sitting still, this is a great time to pull out all these supplies and do the stitching on the tags so that you're ready to go when you want to assemble them and add them to gifts. So now I'm just about to come to the end of this piece of thread that I have. I'm running out of thread, so I need to kind of end this piece and start a new one. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. So when I finish my last little X there that I've created, I just take my needle and I very carefully run it underneath some of the stitches in the background. So you can kind of see I'm just kind of pushing it through under those stitches that I've already created. And then I'm just going to very carefully pull that needle through until I have that thread pulled right through underneath of those other stitches. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to trim off the excess. And that is going to hold this in place, especially because this is a paper tag and we're going to end up adding this to another piece of cardstock and kind of closing all of that stitching in there. That will hold nice and tight and you won't have to worry about it coming undone. So once I have that one tied off, I'm just going to go ahead and start another red piece of thread. So since we had the sixth strand and we separated it into three, I have that other one left over. So I just grabbed that, added it into my needle, and now I'm just running it through and doing the stitching once again. And I just started that thread the exact same way. I just kind of left a tail, held on to it until I had my stitching going, and then once I was good, I just kept going until I had the entire Santa hat completed. So... When you're doing the stitching, you want to keep in mind where your patterns are. So I kind of planned it so that I would come to this side of the hat at the end so that I could do the stitching downwards and not have to drag my thread. And what I mean by dragging your thread is when you end at a certain spot and you need to go to a completely different area of the tag, I definitely don't recommend dragging the thread. So I would cut it off, end that thread, and then start a new thread in any area that you need that color once again. And the reason for that is that it can sometimes show through, especially if you have a darker color 
and it's being dragged across an area with a lighter color. So it's always better to cut off your thread and end that piece and then start a new area anytime you need to change out the colors. So now I have fully stitched his Santa hat. So I'm just going to grab our pattern just to kind of show you a comparison of the tag with the pattern. So you can see all of those red squares in the pattern translated to all the little X stitching that I did on the tag. So from here on you would just continue on with different colors and follow the rest of the pattern to complete the stitching which is what I've done on this tag. Now this Santa is a tiny bit different in design but he's relatively the same. So you just want to change out and grab your white thread to do his beard and your flesh color for his face and just kind of move around until you fully stitch that whole design. Now the outside area I did stitch in blue but it's completely optional. You don't have to completely fill the tag with stitching. If you like the look of the holes around the outside edge you could definitely leave those as is. Now I just want to jump back to this tag here. This is the tag that I created with pencil crayons rather than stitching. So I've used this tree design right here and I've just translated that onto the tag. But rather than doing any of my stitching I've just taken a pencil crayon and recreated those little X designs. So this is really easy to do if you want to recreate the look of cross stitching. You just simply take your tag and you die cut it as you would if you're going to do the stitching. And then I'm just taking my pencil crayon and I'm going along and following the pattern and I'm drawing the X lines on there. Now I recommend having a really sharp pencil crayon when doing this just to make sure that you can get some really nice line detail and not have them super super thick. You do want to be able to still have that X pattern showing. And then all you're going to do is you're going to follow that pattern with the pencil crayon and fully fill in this entire tag. Now I'm not going to do that for the video, I just wanted to show you how to do it to get the finished tag that I do have there on the finished card. So that's kind of a quick look at our cross stitch tag. This is the tag, we have all of the patterns as well as the blank ones for you to recreate your own. You can do pencil crayon detail or markers or any other type of medium rather than thread, or you can take your various thread colors and fully stitch these. So just once again, here are the examples that I did do with the owl, the snowman, and the Santa, and then the tree one that I added to the card, which is my one that I created with the pencils. So thank you so much for joining me in today's video, and I will see you in another one soon.